Thank you very much. We left Melbourne with rain and bad weather looming large as we boarded our Singapore Airlines flight to Singapore and then onwards to Prague with Lufthansa. We were heading to Prague to meet some friends from Germany. They're our good friends, Thomas and Adriana. We've met them numerous times overseas, stayed at their house, and Prague was an ideal halfway destination to meet. We were then onwards to Manchester after that. But while we were there, we organised a couple of day trips out of Prague because we'd both been to Prague many a time. So we thought, well, let's see something around Prague. So the first trip that we organised was the Terrazin concentration camp that's 30 miles northeast of Prague. It's another one of them dark horror sites that the Nazis had across Europe during World War II. So before this was turned into a Nazi camp, it was a fortress for the Habsburg Empire where they used to keep prisoners and it was located sort of halfway between Vienna and Dresden and it was used as a place where they would stop any oncoming armies coming through. From 1940 onwards, Terrazin was under, con under the control of the Gestapo. More than 150,000 Jews were sent to Terrazin, mainly Jews from Czechoslovakia, Germany and Austria. They were sent there along with 15,000 children to be held in this camp for months or years before being sent onwards to their deaths at Treblinka and Auschwitz. This here was a war where they lined up prisoners to shoot them. Uh, there was about 300 people killed here over the time that this was a concentration camp. Terezin was not an extermination camp in the sense that Auschwitz was. There was no gas chambers at Terezin. But of the 150,000 people that went through Terezin, there was only 17,000 survivors in the end. 88,000 of them were sent to Auschwitz and other death camps, while 33,000 of them died from malnutrition and starvation at the camp. Of them 15,000 children I was talking about before, only 150 of them survived. It is so sad. This was a newer part of the camp that was built right at the end. Uh, this part here is actually typically like a concentration camp you'd see anywhere. So the guard used to sit up there and he could see every single thing that was going on in this cell block. As parents who travel with teenagers and kids, uh, I think it's important to bring your kids to places like Terrazin, to places like Auschwitz, to places like Dachau. Um, look, some people may find that odd, but it's important for this generation to learn the things that happen to places like this so we don't make the same mistakes again. It's definitely an important learning curve. Hey guys, today so we're at Karlstein in the Czech Republic. There's a famous castle here. Actually, it's the most popular castle to visit in all of the Czech Republic. So we're going to go and check it out and see what it's like. Uh, we actually love castles. We've been to a lot of castles all around Europe. I think when you're in Australia, you actually appreciate going to castles because there is none in Australia. So this is going to be a good day. Okay, so there's a couple of options here at, when you get to the parking bay. You can either go in a bus, which is... 100 Czech kroner or you can go on a horse and cart which is 200 Czech kroner but I'm not really comfortable going on the horses I think the horses are probably overworked and it's hard on them so we'll take the bus like all good tourist attractions anywhere in the world you will find shops and a marketplace leading up to it uh, Karlstein's certainly no different. Is definitely a chance to see a museum, buy a t-shirt, get a souvenir. So the castle was originally the home of the uh, crown jewels of Bohemia. 
The castle's only located 30 kilometres from Prague, so it's an easy drive. It takes around 35 minutes through some nice countryside. Alternatively, if you haven't got a car, you can catch a train from Prague Main Train Station out to Karlstein. Uh, it takes around an hour, though, via train. So a little bit longer, but still definitely worth the journey. So this amazing castle took about 18 years to build. Like I said earlier, started in 1348 and finished in 1365 when construction was done. The great thing about Prague is uh, it's got such a long and interesting history that you can easily make two, three, four day trips out of the city, depending on how long you're spending. In Prague itself, uh, Beck, Marley and I loved the two trips we made out of Prague, the one to Terezin and the one to Karlstein. Um, certainly fantastic ways to see a little bit more of the Czech Republic than just staying in Prague. So get out and see a lot. So you can either catch a bus, a horse, or well, you can walk up to the castle. Uh, we've decided to walk back down on the way. I'm glad we walked because it's fairly steep. I'm glad we didn't walk up, I should say. <laughs> but it's a good walk going back down. Do you have any other suggestions for great day trips from Prague? Uh, we're always interested to know what other people have done and where they've been. Our time in Prague was only short. We spent three full days, two of them out of the city, one of them in the city. We'd been to Prague before. Uh, then we flew out, heading for Manchester. So it was a quick, good trip. Always great to be in Prague.